Chapter Twenty Six: France and England at War. Henry the Fifth and the Battle of Agincourt. When the Black Death swept across Europe, it interrupted a war between England and France. For ten years, the kings of England and France had been fighting over French land that the English claimed should belong to England. Do you remember that? Richard the Lionhearted was killed in France while he was trying to capture a French castle for England. The English and French had been fighting over land for a very long time. When soldiers on both sides began dying of plague, the two countries gave up fighting for a little while. But as soon as the Black Death passed, the war started up again. In all, France and England would fight each other for over a hundred years. We call this long quarrel the Hundred Years' War. The English king who came closest to winning the Hundred Years' War was named Henry V. He is one of the most famous of all English kings because a poet named William Shakespeare wrote a play about his attack on France. When Henry V became king in 1413, he was determined to bring an end to the war between England and France once and for all, and he had a plan for getting that. English land. Back from the French, you see, Henry's great great grandmother Isabella was a French princess who married an Englishman. So Henry sent a message to the French king saying. The land I want actually belongs to me because I should have inherited it from my great great grandmother, the French princess Isabella. Give it to me, and also give me your daughter Catherine to be my wife, or else I'll invade France with my army. The French king, who was named Charles the Sixth, knew perfectly well that he couldn't give Henry the land and his daughter. If he gave Henry the land, he would be admitting that land belonging to a French princess should actually go to the princess's children, even if those children were English. Then, if Henry married Catherine and had children, Henry could claim that Catherine's children should inherit all the land belonging to Catherine. And since Catherine was the daughter of the King of France, Henry could claim that she had a right to own all of France. Henry's demands were a sneaky way of getting France for himself. So Charles the Sixth sent back a message rejecting Henry's claims. His son, the heir to the French throne, sent Henry a rude insult along with his father's message. He packaged up several tennis balls and told Henry, "You're just acting like a child. Stop running around threatening France and go play some tennis instead to burn off all that extra energy." That was the last straw. Henry V prepared to invade France. In Shakespeare's play, Henry V sends the French prince back this message after he opens the tennis balls. Tell the prince that I am glad he can make jokes with me. Tell him that when I have hit these balls with my racket, I will hit his father's crown right out of bounds. Tell that joking prince that this joke of his has turned his tennis balls into cannon balls, and although a few people may have laughed at his joke, thousands more will weep because of it. Here are Shakespeare's actual words from his play called Henry V, Act One, Scene Two. Remember that dauphin is the French word for prince. We are glad the dauphin is so pleasant with us. When we have matched our rackets to these balls, we will in France, by God's grace, play a set. Shall strike his father's crown into the hazard, and tell the pleasant prince this mock of his hath turned his balls to gunstones, and tell the dauphin his jest will savour but of shallow wit when thousands weep more than did laugh at it. When Henry's army first landed in France, everything went wrong. He was defeated in several small battles with the French. His soldiers got sick. Their shoes began to wear out, and then winter started to come down on them. Henry knew that his army might not survive a long, cold winter camped out in the open, 
so he decided that he should go back to England and try again the following year. But the French didn't intend to let Henry try again. The French army cut off Henry's retreat and met his ragged band of soldiers at a field called Agincourt. Henry was outnumbered, but he had no choice. He had to fight even though his soldiers were tired, cold, hungry, afraid, and outnumbered. In Shakespeare's play, Henry inspires his men to fight with a famous speech in which he tells them that they are lucky to be at Agincourt because men will always remember them, and he tells them that the battle will make them all equal, even those who are peasants or vile the word vile used to mean from a lower part of society, will be like nobility. They will be gentled or made like gentlemen. Here is part of Henry's speech before the battle from Henry V, Act Four, Scene Three. Note that St. Crispin's Day was the day when the French and English fought at Agincourt. We few, we happy few, we band of brothers, for he today that sheds his blood with me shall be my brother. Be he ne'er so vile, this day shall gentle his condition. And gentlemen in England now abed shall think themselves accursed they were not here, and hold their manhoods cheap, while any speaks that fought with us upon St. Crispin's day. Of course, we don't know exactly what Henry V said to his men before the Battle of Agincourt. His speech probably wasn't as stirring as the one that Shakespeare imagines for him, and we don't know whether he convinced his men that they were lucky to be fighting the French. But we do know that the English won the battle, even though the French army was so much bigger. The Battle of Agincourt, which was fought in 1415, was a turning point in the Hundred Years' War. Henry went on to take control of a large part of France, and the French king, Charles VI, gave Henry his daughter Catherine as his wife. Charles also agreed that when he died, Henry V would become the king of France as well as England. But even though Henry V had conquered France, he never got to be its king. He died only seven years after the Battle of Agincourt, two months before Charles VI also died. With both men dead, Henry and Catherine's son, Henry VI, became the king of England and France, even though he was only a year old. 